uh, is uh, Mary Kazura, who is uh, Director of Admissions at MCAD. And you may have heard from one or both of us already, certainly from Mary. And then, as I mentioned, our special guest um, today is an alumni of the program, um, Gautam Muradharan. Sorry, Mar Murali Dharan. I'll never say that properly, God, I'm sorry about that. And then we'll be um, hearing from him uh, later in our, our session today. Okay, so I just want to start by saying hi. We have our cameras off for most of this, um, but I'll say hi real quick. I don't know if Mary can get online or not, um, just so you can put a, a face to a name. I'm going to turn my camera off just to save bandwidth, but we, oh, there you are. <laughs> You're back from the fire drill. But we'll, um, We'll hopefully be able to get back on camera at the end uh, for our questions. Okay, let me get back to our, there we go. <clears throat> All right, so what I wanna do in the next you know, few minutes here is just to answer some questions I frequently get um, about the program and then direct you to where you can learn more. So one of the questions I get pretty often is, you know, is the program new? I haven't heard of it or, I didn't know there was such a thing as a Master of Arts in Sustainable Design because it is, you know, it is uh, it is quite pioneering. Well, actually, uh, MCAD itself is quite old. It's one of the oldest art and design schools in the nation. It's kind of surprisingly since it's in, in the Midwest, but it's over 130 years old now. Um, but MCAD was quite pioneering in um, online learning. The first experimental online course back in 1996. Our program started out as a professional certificate program, and it did start out as an online program. So it's been mm -hmm. online the whole time. Um, in 2008, it became a post back program, and then in 2012, it became the full Master of Art in Sustainable Design program. So it's been around for a while now um, in, uh, in different forms uh, with the same original core faculty that, that formed it. Um, and as such, it became the first art and design school with a fully online program in sustainability. And to my knowledge, it still is. So we're pioneering and we're unique. And of course, I think it's a fantastic program. Another question I get if people are bold enough to ask is, um, is it legitimate? You know, it's like it's an online program. Can you really do a master's degree online? Um, and the simple and certain answer to that is yes. Uh, we're fully accredited college, fully accredited program, both by the Higher Learning Commission and um, with the HLC you may have heard of, and the National Association of Schools of Art and Design. Whoops, <clears throat> excuse me. Like many master's degrees, it's uh, 30 credits, and for us, that's 10 uh, three-credit classes. And if you um, go right through it, it's, um, it takes you five semesters. We're based, uh, we're based in theory, um, a lot of practice, uh, all of our pro courses are project-based, and uniquely, we teach you leadership skills, and we'll mention that again in a minute. So, what courses will you take? Um, in our program, we, we have set it up that where you take four what we call core courses, four specialization courses, and two electives. The four cor courses are actually three courses, one of which you take twice. Um, so you, the very beginning of the program, you take fundamentals of sustainable design and systems thinking. Um, systems thinking is core to sustainability and sustainable design. So that will come up. You get it early and often in our program. And at the end of the program, you take what we call graduate sustainability thesis project. And you take it over two semesters, and that's where you get to work on your independent thesis project. The specialization courses um, are creative leadership. So we have a course devoted to leadership, uh, making the business case uh, for sustainability, the practice of sustainable design, which is the upscale course from fundamentals, and then collaborative product design. Um, we also offer practicum, so you can take that instead of one of these four courses, which is like an independent study, if that's something you choose to pursue. And then you get to take two electives. We offer four of them, innovation tools and techniques, biomimetic design or biomimicry, visual communications for sustainability, and packaging. So we'll, we offer those in different sequences depending on who's in the program, uh, what their needs are, and what they're most excited about. 
I won't go through all the courses here. Um, you can look at them um, on our YouTube channel, which I'll uh, I'll show you um, in a few minutes here. But I just want to give you a sense of some of the project work that comes out of um, classes. I wanted to show you this one because um, for two reasons. One that, as I mentioned, you get to bring um, all of our courses are project based, and you get to bring your own project ideas into each course. So even in the beginning courses like systems thinking, you can bring a passion project into the course and work on it. In this case, it was soft robotics. Um, and I also want to show you this one because you can see that some of our students um, tend towards the technical side, some tend towards the environmental side, some tend towards the social side, some more on um, business ideas. Um, this one is more technical. Also, some of our students are amazing at graphics. I mean, they're graphic designers by profession. So you'll get some of your um, peers producing beautiful graphics and others are doing hand done drawing or something created in PowerPoint. So we get all kinds. The practice of sustainable design is one of our more advanced classes. Um, and I wanted to show you this one because again, you get to bring your own project ideas into the class and this student, like others in the program, had a child during the, the program and realized how unsustainable um, having a baby um, can be. So that's the, he wanted to work on a sustainable um, child car, car seat design. I mentioned before that we have leadership in our program, which is really unique. Um, we think it's super important that you get uh, a unique kind of exposure to leadership, because if you're gonna be a sustainable, designer, you're forwarding different ideals and different ideas in a conventional world. And using conventional leadership models and organizational structures just doesn't work. So we start with teaching you about yourself and yourself as a leader, how to engage with others, and then how to lead a, a group. And you get to do, again, you come up with a, a cool um, portfolio project for each of your courses. Collaborative product design is one of our upper level, upper level courses. In this class, you form student teams and yep, you're fully online so your team members can be from anywhere across the world in different time zones and different disciplines. So you get really great skills on how to collaborate and how to collaborate online. Um, we also get an industry partner and we get a product from them. In this case, it was a chair. You work with your team to take this product apart, um, analyze it in different ways, apply different sustainability and sustainable design tools and frameworks, and then um, <clears throat> give recommendations back to the, the industry. So you get to collaborate uh, not only with each other, but with industry. So that's a really, really cool opportunity in class. A lot of people come into our program because they love biomimicry and they want to get a more thorough grounding in it. So we have biomimicry show up in different courses like systems thinking and cloud to product design. We also have a course just in what we call biomimetic design. And we call it that instead of biomimicry because we want to have the flexibility to uh, interpret that um, maybe differently than say the Biomimicry Institute does. Although we partner with them on things and we're an education fellow with them, um, an education partner with, with them. Visual communications um, is one of our electives. We, um, between that and making the business case for sustainability, we know that sustainability is full of numbers and complexities. You know, it's across the globe and there's, there's environmental data and there's business data, you know, demographic data. It's all, all this kind of stuff. And you have to be able to communicate that to the people where you want to affect change, whether it's in business or the public. So we have classes that help you do that. And I also want to show this class, Packaging Sustainability. We offer this for a couple of reasons. One, we've got packaging um, specialists in our, in our faculty. And um, also because, as you know, packaging is a huge sustainability issue. And a lot of different um, sustainable design concepts come together in packaging design. So that's a really neat class that we're excited to offer. I mentioned at the end of the program, you do a thesis project. Um, we we allow you and encourage you to do something that you're really excited about. Um, in this case, uh, Kelly Wilcox was actually in fashion. She works for Reebok, and she was really concerned about microfiber pollution of her industry and the products that she works on. 
And she, you can see, did all, this is the kind of processes um, you see on the left that a student might go through in throughout their thesis journey. And what she ended up with was actually an, a, uh, something she used biomimicry to design. It was a, this, this uh, unit that you, you add on the end of a wastewater treatment plant. So she actually got into wastewater treatment plant design. So that's the direction she took. Another one is um, Brenna Kelly. She graduated just in the spring. Um, again, she had children and realized how unsustainable baby products were. So she developed a business using um, a, you know, many different techniques, but including circular economy to come up with a, um, a rental service for um, children's uh, products. So, why this program? I'm sure if you guys are considering doing a master's degree, I'm sure you've looked at other programs. So, so why this program? Um, there's a lot of different reasons, and I would be happy to talk to any of you individually. Um, one thing is it's fully online, and that is uh, provides a bunch of different benefits. You don't have to move. You don't have to uproot your life or your family. You can keep your job. Um, you can work the degree around your schedule. All those things make it, um, you can continue to earn money while you're you know, doing your master's, so continue your career. All those things make a master's degree much more doable. Another is that all of our faculty are practicing professionals. None of them are full-time academics. What that means is you're learning from and working with people who are out there in the field doing the very things that um, they're teaching you. We have small classes, um, high touch, so you get to engage uh, with your fellow students and with the faculty as much as you like. It's um, Even though we're fully online, we get to engage with each other quite a bit, which is really great. Um, because we're online, we also get to be global. Um, so you get global perspectives, you um, fellow students and faculty um, and alumni. And that also means that uh, becoming a student means you get to join this really cool, diverse international network of sustainability professionals. Um, I mentioned we do, you get to do this open self-directed self thesis. You're very supported in this process. We push you to come up with this amazing thesis presentation at the end. And I'll show, show you where you can look up some of the past thesis projects. Um, we're also active on social media. And why that's important for you is because um, if you want, it gives you a platform to get your yourself and your word out. Um, your ideas out. So like just this morning, I wrote a blog on one of our current students because I was really inspired by a, a conversation I had with her about a thesis project proposal. Um, our faculty, uh, we're diverse too. We have, um, as you can imagine, a bunch of us are designers, all kinds, product designers, graphic designers, packaging. We also have non-designers, engineers like myself, um, biologists, business people, urban planners. But, um, entrepreneurs, communicators. Our faculty are internationally recognized. Uh, we travel sometimes around the world um, doing workshops and giving lectures, working on books. Um, and again, we're practicing sustainability professionals. So we you get to engage in our networks too. Like our faculty, our students can be designers. Um, they can be non-designers. We, we really have all types of people in this program, which makes it really, really neat for collaborations. Uh, we've got an international bunch, um, people, we've got Americans living abroad, we've got uh, non-Americans in the program. It's really fun to have that diversity. Um, most of them are practicing professionals. There's a few that are right out of undergraduate school, but most are either early to mid-career. We've got a few late career people that want to spend the last bit of their career doing something with impact. Um, and so, like I said, we've got diverse ages um, in there, too. So we, we um, talk about some of the benefits of the program. One is that it's flexible. Unlike many programs where you, you, know, you commit, you move there, you go through the degree, we allow a, a quite a bit of flexibility. Uh, one way is that you can take just one course to start with. So if you're not really sure you can handle it um, with your lifestyles and your job, you can start with just one course. And in fact, we allow you to take one course at a time throughout the program. So, that, and some students take advantage of that. We also, I uh, mentioned that practicum class, you can do your practicum work over the summer. 
<clears throat> which means that you can, you know, it's like getting one of your courses done in the summer and then you actually sign up for the practicum in the fall to finish up the, the reporting. And you get to work on your own projects. So some people who are working do work projects or work passion projects um, in, in their classes. So then they can actually advance in their company while they're, you know, you know, working on their, um, their masters. You can do uh, pet projects, passion projects, explore all kinds of different things. Or some people work on the same project throughout all their classes. So by the time they're done, they're just an expert in that field. By becoming a student um, with us, even if you're working full time, you get a student ID card, which is really, it sounds trivial, but it's, um, it's a big deal because you get student discounts at all sorts of um, places, including things like um, Spotify. And <laughs> so it's not a small matter. You, we give you free access to lynda.com, which is a great benefit. And you can actually use that for things outside of the program. So if you want to learn how to do programming or play the guitar, you can also use lynda.com for that. Uh, you get free access to the Adobe Suite, which some of you know is quite expensive, so that's a, a really great benefit. Um, and if you don't know how to use the Adobe Suite, you can take lynda.com courses to teach yourself. Um, you also get tuition waivers for MCAD's continuing education courses. That's a huge benefit. If you're in the Twin Cities area, you can actually go to the live classes. And if you're not, they have a whole suite of online classes, including like web design and graphic design. So you can take those. And some of our students have taken very uh, full advantage of that. And as I mentioned before, you get to join our network. Um, we love supporting not only our students and our faculty, but our alumni too. So um, once you, you're, you're in, you're part of this wonderful network. So where can you learn more? I mentioned social media. We've got um, a blog site, which I want to, I'll show you. We've got a Facebook site, which you may have seen, which is outward facing. We also have closed ones for the students and one for the alumni. We have a public LinkedIn group, then we've got a closed group just for the students, alumni, and faculty to you know, share amongst themselves. Uh, Twitter, um, which I encourage you to follow because I always try and put interesting things out there. And then we've got a YouTube channel. So let me just bug over there just for a second so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so I think you guys have all seen this page by now. This is the mcad.edu slash sustainable. And you can see there's an overview page, the landing page here. Um, if you want to know more about specific courses, you can go to degree information and then scroll down um, and look at view all course descriptions. So you can see what those are about. So I'm sure you've explored that, but I'll go ahead and let you do that um, You know, if, if you want to know more. Um, this is our blog site. So the landing page is the actual blogs. I put one out every week, usually Tuesday morning. Um, I encourage you to go through these, uh, um, all kinds of different topics. Sometimes it's about what we're up to. Um, other times it's about the program, but there's other, um, I like to share other kind of information, which I think you might find useful. So pop over there. The other cool thing about this blog site is that we've got a page about the students. Um, you can click on any one of them and learn more about the student. Um, so you can find out who else is in the program now. Uh, you can find out who has been in the program. Ditto with their alumni page. And same thing with our faculty. So I encourage you to explore that so you get more of a sense of who we are and what we think about. The other neat thing here is that we've got this projects tab. And here you can um, learn about all the different uh, thesis projects that have ever been done. And you can click on it. It takes you to MCAD's digital library, and you can actually download the whole thesis. So that is awesome. You can get, you can look at all the different topics, um, find out, you know, the the range and breadth and depth of the kind of things that that people um, work on. So that's a really cool asset, even if um, you know, just to get a sense of what's what. Okay, so I mentioned the YouTube channel. Um, so it's just the MCAT Sustainable Design YouTube channel. There's not a ton there, but um, the thing I wanted to direct you to is we've got what I've talked, I'm talking about today, I've got a little bit more in depth um, in these little FAQs. And it's also, if someone's asking you about the program, you can direct them there too. 
I mentioned we're in Twitter. Um, it's a great, it'd be great to follow um, at MCAD Sustain DSGN because um, I also post things like job opportunities and design challenges and stuff. So you might be interested in following that um, regardless. I mentioned we got a LinkedIn um, page and also a Facebook page, which I, um, I encourage you to um, join any of those. Um, while I'm here, I just want to show you, this is what one of our courses looks like. This is systems thinking. Um, we have been on Blackboard and we're migrating over to the Canvas platform. Some of you may be familiar with. So this is kind of what it looks like on the landing. Um, and, you know, you can each week you get, you know, someone will show you what's up that week. There's usually little lectures here and you can access readings and assignments um, here too. Okay. Enough of that. Um, so, there we go. Okay, so if, you, um, if you're interested in the program, and I certainly hope you are, um, how do I apply? Um, I'll just quick tell you that um, you may know this already, but the missions dates um, coming right up in a couple of weeks is the early action deadline. Uh, some people like that to make sure they secure a spot. And um, the earlier you secure your spot, the earlier you can line up um, finances and scheduling. Um, some people get tuition reimbursements, financial aid, um, whatnot. Uh, November 1st is a priority decision and the very final deadline for spring of 2020 is um, December 1st. So I'm gonna hand it over now to um, Mary. And let's see. Um, oh, thank you. I haven't done it yet, have I? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. There we go. Uh, good question. Sarah was wondering when the official spring start is. So spring courses are going to start um, mid-January. Um, so if you are interested in applying for spring, you're definitely going to want to get your admissions materials in, you know, between October 1st and November 1st is pretty good. Um, we do continue to accept materials until um, December 1st, but again, just like Denise said, it helps you get all your um, financial aid kind of in line and, and figure out exactly, um, you know, what the costs are. All right, well, um, my name is Mary Kazura, and I am the Director of Admissions and essentially the gatekeeper when it comes to the admissions process. So you'll be going through me for a lot of your admissions, well, all of your admissions questions. Um, and I just wanted to reference a couple of pages here so that you know where to find some basic information. Um, I'm going to type it into the chat box as well. But this is the general admissions page for our Master of Arts programs. So we're gonna just pop into here and check out tuition fees. Oops, hello, here we go. So currently for the 2019-20 academic year, um, full-time enrollment in the program is six credits. That's basically two classes per semester. Part-time enrollment is three credits or one class per semester. And the per credit fee for the MA program is 855. So folks that are going full-time, Per semester, they're looking at paying 5130 Folks that are going part-time per semester are looking at paying $2,565. Um, there is a per semester technology fee of $125. And then we estimate your textbooks and supplies. This is, you know, generally things that you're going to purchase. But we like you to think about, you know, just budgeting for those things. So. This is really gonna vary from person to person. Um, additionally, there is a one-time fee for new students. That's the tuition deposit. Um, that's asked from students who have been admitted. It's basically kind of like earnest money when you're buying a house, you put 30 or you put $300 down on your first semester's tuition. And it is credited towards your first semester's tuition. And then uh, Denise had briefly talked about employer tuition reimbursement. So um, we have worked with several students that have brought to us employer tuition reimbursement. Um, and essentially this is something that you would want to work with your current employer and find out if they would be willing to reimburse some of your tuition. And, and they may, especially if you're going to be turning around and using some of the things you're learning in your master's program back at your work 
Um, so the first steps for kind of figuring out whether this is going to work or not is to contact your human resources department to get more information. And then anything that they need from us, we are happy to provide. Um, so usually a conversation between human resources and admissions that happens after that. So let us know if you are interested in that. So jumping back to this page here, there is the application checklist as well. So all of our programs have the same online application form. At the end of this webinar, um, I am gonna send everybody an email with an application fee waiver code that'll waive the $50 fee if you decide to apply online. So it's just kind of a little thank you for doing that. Um, but you're going to need to actually submit all of these materials, the official college transcripts, letters of recommendation, personal statement, and a resume online for us. And I'll show you where you're going to be submitting that. Let me give you a link to that checklist here in the chat box. And then I'm gonna take you over to Slide Room. So some of you may have used this before, but we ask for all admissions materials to be submitted at Slide Room. And our Slide Room address is mcad.slideroom.com. So this is in addition to that online application um, that you're gonna be submitting. And Denise is correct, the Master of Arts in Sustainable Design program does not require a portfolio of art for admission. So when you go to mcad.slideroom.com, you're gonna see kind of general information. It does remind folks um, to do the online application, make sure you've taken care of that. It also reminds people that in order to enroll in one of our graduate programs, you have to have completed a four-year undergraduate degree, or you will have completed a four-year undergraduate degree by the time you start in our program. So down here, we've got the graduate programs that are available right now. And the one you're looking for is the Master of Arts in Sustainable Design, MASD for short. And again, it's just gonna remind you of all the stuff that you're needing to supply. And it reminds you that this is for the spring semester start. So we do have both spring and fall. So let's just take a quick peek at the actual application. So each one of these titles, that is actually gonna be a tab once you sign up and set up an account in Slide Room, which is free, it's a free account. But each one of these are gonna be a tab and it's a place where you can either directly enter information, typing it in there, or you can upload PDF documents. So the personal statement that you're being asked to provide, you're asked to answer three different questions and just Go ahead and, and give yourself some time to really think about that and what you want to write. You can type it out in a Word document, um, spell check and proofread it, and then copy and paste it in there. We definitely want to hear about your ideas, your thoughts, you know, why you're coming to this program and why it's important to you. The graduate student introductory video is completely optional, but we find it's really helpful. Even if you just take a minute or two to introduce yourself and say hello, it's very helpful since this is an online program that kind of gives us that personal touch to be able to see you and hear from you um, and find out a little bit. But it is optional, it's not required. Um, it, it just can, it can be a little bit helpful. So attachments in the attachments tab, this is where you're gonna upload your resume and your college transcripts. So your resume, you're gonna wanna show um, a current copy of your resume that highlights your past and present professional and volunteer and educational experiences. This is where you're gonna put any uh, awards that you've won, any scholarships or grants, volunteer opportunities, um, any, any projects you've worked on, any of that stuff. This is really where you get a chance to toot your own horn and talk about um, your accolades. And this should be saved as a PDF with a four page minimum. The college transcript, um, Probably the easiest way to get an electronic college transcript is to either contact your, the registrar of your college directly and ask if they can forward you an electronic copy. Or you can co contact Clearinghouse, and Clearinghouse is um, a national company that does have transcripts, um, digital copies of transcripts. You may have to pay a fee like $5, 
But then if you upload that copy of your college transcripts, that's actually, if it comes from your college or it comes from Clearinghouse, it's considered official and we can use that. But you're gonna wanna update, or you're gonna wanna attach the, the college transcript that shows what school you received your four-year undergraduate from, the, you know, the name of that degree, when you graduated, your grades, that kind of stuff. Um, so the next tab will be references. This is where you're gonna upload three letters of recommendation. It's not really that you're uploading, actually, you're requesting three letters of recommendation for three different reviewers. These can be mentors, they can be employers, clients, collaborators, um, it kind of really runs the gamut, but somebody that can talk about your, you know, work habits, your, you know, interest in sustainability, um, they can just kind of provide that character reference for us. And essentially what it is, is you enter their contact information and then Slide Room sends them an email and then they respond back to that email, which takes them into their own portal on Slide Room where they can enter your letter of recommendation. So it's a good idea to let them know that's coming, uh, let them know to check their spam filter just in case. Um, and the final tab is the, the portfolio. So again, a portfolio of visual work is not required for Master of Arts and Sustainable Design students. However, sometimes students want to show um, visual documentation of a project that they've worked on that's applicable to sustainable design. And in that case, you can upload a zero to three, <laughs> provide zero to three. You can upload up to three images, um, you know, of something maybe you've worked on, but that, again, that's optional, definitely not required. So those are the admissions uh, requirements. The last thing I just wanted to point out is that you can, uh, domestic students can apply for the FAFSA, the Free Application for Federal Student Aid, starting October 1st each year. Um, we definitely recommend that you do that, and I will put a link to that in the chat box as well. So does anybody have any questions for me about the admissions process? I have a quick question. Uh, it's Anne. Do you need to fill an application form if you'd like to start with one class to try? So you're asking, do you have to fill out an application form if you just wanted to try one class? Yes. It's a uh, system thinking, if you want to take yeah. that class. So that's a very good question. We do actually offer courses um, through continuing education as well. Um, so continuing ed is different than the degree seeking program. This mm -hmm. is where you are kind of just taking a class here and there. And, and no, it does not require an application to go through this process. So. And so they're not taking, for example, the system thinking class through the um, continuing education. Can it uh, then translate if I'm doing the master degree after that? Can it That's a very good question, Denise. Do you know if the yeah. systems thinking class, is that for credit? Yeah, so Anne, how it would work is if you want it to count towards your degree, you would need to take it for credit. So in continuing education, mm -hmm. you could take it not for credit or for credit. Okay. Not for credit is quite a bit cheaper. So there's that, um, yeah. you know, looking at that. The other, um, the other thing to consider is that because we allow you to take one class at a time, I always encourage people to go ahead and apply for the program, get mm -hmm. accepted, because then you get all the other benefits of being in the program, mm -hmm. as opposed yeah. to a continuing, you know, if you're taking it for credit, you're paying exactly the same. And you're having the same experience because the instructor treats everyone the same, you know, regardless of whether you're a student or continuing ed. So you get the benefits of being in the program uh, for no additional cost. So if you're thinking of testing out one class, uh, I would go ahead and apply for the program. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I second, I second that. I think that's a really good idea. Yeah, I couldn't um, figure out for a while why would you do why would you do that? <laughs> I couldn't. I think I asked around. Everyone agreed it just makes sense to join the program, and mm -hmm. and then you know once you're in the program, we can you know we are more than happy to spend time with you on mm -hmm. you know, all kinds of stuff. You know whatever professionally and academically. Yeah, absolutely. And and it is worth pointing out that if you are 
interested in this program and you happen to be a local student, so you, you live in the Twin Cities or you're nearby, um, you, you can take advantage of some of our facilities on campus as well, like our library and our cafeteria and our art store. And um, so that's just something to think about that even though this is 100% online and we do reach out and uh, engage with our online students really well, if you are here in the Twin Cities, absolutely take advantage of the campus itself. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Any other questions? I think that's me. I'll turn it back over to you, Denise. Okay. There we go. All right, we're back. Okay, and again, um, the early action is October 1st. You know, it has as late as December 1st um, to, to apply. All right, now I'm excited to share with you um, our guest, um, Gautam. Um, and actually, um, I'll, I'll let you talk about yourself, but um, I just wanna share with you, um, this is his thesis project, and if you go to our blog and look up projects, you can look, go, they're in um, chronological order, so you can go down to summer 2014 and see his, uh, see his project. Gautam comes from a business background, so he has looked at the interface between business and sustainability, has been working with PricewaterhouseCoopers for some time, and has recently and bravely <laughs> become an entrepreneur. And this is his new website, uh, Soul Work. And there's the website down there if you want to explore it. It's DoSoulWork.com. So, um, Gautam, why don't you um, introduce yourself and tell a little bit about why you joined the program and what you've done since you've completed it. Sure, wonderful. Uh, can everyone hear me? Just want to make sure that. Yeah. Okay, wonderful. All right. So, uh, thank you so much for having me on today. Uh, it's truly a pleasure, and that's a very flattering photograph because I've lost quite a bit of hair <laughs> since then. So, <laughs> so I look a lot different if any of you guys run into me. So, uh, anyway, so a little bit about myself. Uh, you know, I grew up in India. I came to the U.S. Uh, primarily to go to school uh, in two thousand and one. My background is all engineering, uh, so I am a computer engineer, and uh, you know I always wanted to study arts, and that was a passion of mine. Uh, it was just uh, an interesting sequence of events that led to me prioritizing engineering over arts. Uh, regardless, you know, I mean, I had an opportunity to go back to school again, so I do have another master's uh, that that is in computer science and engineering, uh, and it was at Maryland College Park, so that's where I, I went to school. Uh, then I got to go to MCAT because, uh, and, and what attracted me to this program was two things. One, my own passion for the arts. I, I stayed in touch with, uh, with that, uh, you know, not just, not just, you know, from a, uh, from a hobby standpoint, but also, you know, just in my own line of work, which dealt with solving technology consulting problems. That's what I did. Uh, and I tried to apply design principles as much as I could. Uh, you know, I used to follow companies like IDEO, and it was it was it was something that was waiting to happen. And I got to a point in my career where I wanted to make a leap and and go to a formal, get a formal education, you know, in arts. And as I was exploring programs, uh, you know, this program really stood out to me for two reasons. Right, one, you know, my my job required me to travel quite a bit, and so it was very hard for me to make a commitment to a program where I had to be physically present all the time. And it was just not logistically possible, but I, yet I wanted to do a program like that. And second, which is the more important reason, was this idea of infusing several disciplines that Denise and Mary talked about earlier into an arts program, right? It's not just about design, it is about sustainable design, which was very important to me because my background uh, you know, in engineering was to do with neural nets, uh, which is basically this idea of emulating how the brain thinks in machines, and now it's popularly adopted as artificial intelligence. But, you know, biomimicry was something that I was fascinated with from a very young age. And so for me to see a program that was able to successfully weave these different concepts together was very attractive. And the mode of delivery was also great. So, you know, I, I went through the program, uh, you know, was 
initially quite skeptical because you know of my background i didn't know how i'd fit in uh, but that turned out to be the best part of the experience because you know i just met this eclectic group of people you know there were architects in the class graphic designers like denise talked about uh, people with very different backgrounds uh, very diverse backgrounds geographically distributed all over the world and it was very eye opening for me because you know i was i had a very monolithic view of uh, you know the work that I did, at least my professional network was that way. And it was sort of blown up because of that. And, and uh, you know, even though it was an online program, because I live in Minneapolis, I landed up becoming very, very good friends with several other people. Uh, you know, I I'd go climbing regularly with, uh, you know, one of my classmates from catch. So there is no reason not to extend the relationship beyond your virtual classroom. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, so so now, you know, my thesis was actually based on this idea of how do you how do you build dynamic supply chains uh, so that you could you could uh, you could build a more sustainable community right where small businesses are able to take on companies like target and walmart and eventually that idea morphed into you know how do you how do you maximize productivity and capacity in your own companies right i mean so we all have the situation where you know work gets distributed to people and and that process is suboptimal at best uh, it's either riddled with bias or it's 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 reinforcing things that 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 we we think is the best way to get work done. So managers are constantly delegating against these biases and 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 towards normal channels. Our argument is as the world evolves and work evolves and people are more distributed and and working from all over the place, the way we delegate and do work has to change. And that's primarily at the heart of the platform that we built. But all that was conceived at MCAD to tie it, up, tie it all back together. And so, yeah, I did make the uh, big leap of faith uh, about six months back and I quit my job at PwC uh, to, to go do that. So that's in essence, you know, a very long winded way of saying, uh, you know, that's who I am and uh, that's what I did at MCAD. Well, thanks for that. That's just so neat and you know you're not alone there's a bunch of people that come in with one set of ideas about why they want to get their master's degree then they're, they're transformed by the program and leave doing something really different and um i love what you have here because <laughs> they figure out a way to make work meaningful um so i wanted to open up to, to questions you guys can all turn your mics on um those of you who are able to do that and or you can type in the chat box so if you got questions for any of us um, about the program admissions or specifically um, Gautam about what it's like to be in the program, um, you know, kind of day to day or semester to semester. Okay, so Sarah's asking, do you believe full-time status is still doable alongside a full-time job? Just want to set actionable expectations for myself and others. Um, Sarah, that's a, that's a great question. Um, Many of our students are full-time, some are full-time and have children, and they do it. Um, and that's why we do provide flexibility. So you can do full-time, you can take two courses a semester and get through it, um, absolutely. Um, the person I showed you before, um, Brenna Kelly, that did the one with the, the baby products, she, single mom working full-time, two children, uh, I know her kids were having had some like medical challenges and no problem. She just did it. Other people, they decide to, they take the program while in transition career wise, like, um, or they take one class at a time. Uh, one of our students had a baby and she's taking a semester off. So that's why we provide the flexibility and we can because we're online. So it is doable. Um, it, it depends on you and what your life is like and what you want your life to be like. Gautam, do you have any other comments on that? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I can give you my own uh, example. Obviously, you know, uh, that was a great example that Dennis, uh, Denise gave, and I don't want to equate myself to that, but, you know, it sounds definitely more challenging and inspiring story. But in my own case, you know, I have twin boys. Uh, they're eight years old now. When I took the program, they were about three. And uh, so I, I took the full course load on in addition to a traveling job and you know this comes from a very disorganized person so I'm assuming that you're probably way 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 more organized than I am so I think as long as you know you you're 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 organized around it I mean 
expect some of your weekends and, and evenings to like get taken over, but you know, it's part of the commitment and sacrifice that you're making to get what you want. Right. So that's what I had to do. I just told myself, you know, instead of, instead of, you know, going out every Friday or something like that, I just set expectations with my wife and my kids that, you know, Hey, this is something that's important to me. And, and, you know, we just worked around that and that seemed to work. Okay. And I, a lot of support. Uh, and I think the course load is, is fairly manageable. I don't, I don't really think it is that, that intense that it takes over your life. Right, thanks for that. Um, and Paige asked, are there in-person events or classes? Does taking an online program limit networking opportunities? Um, as to your first question, uh, it says, uh, whenever I go to Minneapolis, uh, like I said, I live in Montana, um, we always have a gathering of um, students, alumni, and faculty, sometimes more than one, and that's always really fun. Um, as Gautam pointed out, students become friends and organize themselves, whether it's in Minneapolis or elsewhere. I know some of the students, um, well, they've just connected amongst themselves, and I know some, they, they meet up in Copenhagen for the Fashion Summit, or they meet in New York, I'll say, is anyone going to LA, or I'm going to be in Chicago. So it's it's great to to do that and it's i encourage students to be as proactive and um and connect with each other as possible i'm always happy to facilitate that and i and i will do that if i know what your interests are i said oh you should talk to so and so and so and so whether it's students alumni or faculty the um so it's not the same as like running into someone for coffee every day so it's not like that um but you also don't have the commute <laughs> to deal with but uh, as far as networking opportunities, I feel like it's even better than when you're um, not online because you can tap into this global network. You know, each one of us has this network. Um, and once you're in it, you, you're, you're, you know, you, you're connected throughout. And again, if we know, we meaning, you know, your colleagues, uh, faculty, myself, if we know what you're interested in, we'll get you connected. And I know like, for example, I used to live in Britain and I had, one of our students had an interest. I said, oh my gosh, you gotta get connected with so-and-so who was living in Brazil, who used to live in Britain and someone else got connected up with someone in India. And I, I work in Africa a couple times a year. And um, so it's, you know, it's really a neat networking opportunity and being online, you get really good at leveraging all the different ways to engage with other people online. Yeah, you're welcome. Other questions? Uh, yes, Anne again. I have a question. Um, do most of the students already have um, a thesis project in mind when they start um, the master degree, or is it usually more process, or, um, or do you have kind of little suggestion? And how does it uh, work usually? Yeah, well, that, that's a great question, and all three of those happen. Some people come in. And they, they're super passionate about something. We've got one woman who's finishing up this semester. Um, she's Hawaiian and almost all of her coursework and her thesis work is has to do with Hawaii and sustainability there. Other people, they have no idea. Um, and they get ideas through coursework or mm -hmm. um, through conversations. We suggest things, again, make you know, mm -hmm. set up conversations with people. Um, and then we, we take you through a process. So after you get six credits done, you write a thesis project brief. It's just a one page idea about what you might want to work, work on and what it might look like. And we give you feedback on that. And after 12 credits, you write a proposal and we give you feedback on that. Mm -hmm. And after a few mm -hmm. more credits, then you actually start your thesis work. So yes. you're guided through it. Um, so if you've got great ideas, we can help you shape it into a thesis project. Mm -hmm. If you don't have ideas, we can help you, um, find one. Okay. Perfect. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, great questions. We haven't heard from Amy yet. Do you have any questions? I'm not sure if you're able to. Hi, yes, this is Amy. Um, so I'm older than most of your students. I'm now 61. And um, I've always been for sustainability in my life. And I've also, you know, been a single mom who raised three kids who are now obviously grown ups. I have a grandchild and I live on a farm. I've lived here 27 years. It's been in, you know, it's a non-certified organic farm. It's not very productive. Mostly I'm a gardener. 
<laughs> but I've always been for sustainability. I've owned my own business and recently I, I was able to sell it. Um, and I don't know what, you know, I also, this, this I, I've been watching your program for two or three years. I became aware of it about three years ago. And um, I signed up late for one of your free biomimicry classes that you offered. And the, the very little I got of it, I really enjoyed. Um, but I'm thinking, what would I do with, <laughs> with this degree? You know, like how would I balance the tuition versus the, um, the, you know, the outcomes. So what I'm interested in are food systems. I, I, for some, I have a background in my, my undergraduate degrees in fine arts. I also have done a lot of graphic design. So, you know, I have a, I'm kind of a hodgepodge. And now I'm wondering like, what would I do with a degree like this? I, I don't think I would want to go back to work full time to, you know, to be, to be honest, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I could see that there's something for me to say out in the world about sustainability that matters and how would this degree um, make a difference in that way? Well, that's a great set of questions, Amy. Um, and you're not you're not the only one who's you know enters this program later in the career because you've had a, a lifetime and then maybe now you've got some more time um, and and maybe search you know soul searching about what do you want to do with you know the next chapter in your life. So interestingly, people come into it uh, with all kinds of different ideas and they tend to leave with <laughs> with different ideas they came into. Um, so some people have a job and they just get advanced in their in their company. Um, other people come in uh, thinking they're just going to do what they're doing already, but make it sustainable. Uh, a lot of people get transformed and end up starting their own business. They didn't think they were going to when they came in, um, and then they do when they leave. So uh, hopefully the program would transform you and give you those ideas, and you can play with different projects in each class and with your thesis project, create something. So there's no, there's no one answer there. People have different pathways and I'm happy to, you know, connect you to as one of our students who's a, um, a little older that you might want to um, talk to and get her experience um, with the program. So um, we, we can do that offline and we can, you know, same with all of you guys, if you got specific questions, I am more than happy to set up a time to chat about your, um, your personal, situations. Thank you, Denise. Yeah. And Scott had kind of a similar um, question um, about, uh, you know, the top careers that previous alumni have obtained after graduating. Um, I guess I was sort of to answer that. Um, there's kind of different classes. Uh, again, some people come into the program because they want to transition careers. So they come in with one thing and they they leave with something else. Um, we have a couple of students that work for big companies and they have now um, getting their master's has or is like one, one person's a current student is all these cool opportunities are opening up for her. She's at a huge company and um, because of her, it was actually a practicum project and now her thesis work, she got to be with the C-suite people doing really neat stuff that she never would have been able to do had she not been doing this this work. It's really, you learn specific tools, but you also learn how to think differently, very different kind of problem solving, you know, systems thinking. Um, it's stuff that I hear CEOs, both in the sustainability side and not talk about what they need with people. And this is exactly what you get trained to do. We've had some people come in um, and then they realize, wow, I am going to start my own business. They were thinking they were just going to get another job. Several people have started their own business. A few have gone to education. They get so passionate about what they learn, they decide they want to share it with others. Um, so it's really all over the place. But I do, yeah, it's a great idea just to explore our alumni and, and see uh, what they're doing because that's that's probably the best way. I wouldn't say there's one specific thing. People, you know, that's part of their um, career journey. And, and it is a degree that has a lot of passion behind it. If you want to get like an MBA or, you know, that's like, more specific, you know, marketable degree. Um, this is sets you up for all kinds of different 
possibilities. But I, I will say that people don't, you won't see a job for sustainable designer that often. It's more in either sustainability and you bring all the power of design to sustainability um, or it's in design and you bring all the power of design to, I'm sorry, all the power of sustainability to design. Yeah, because you, you've got the, the link to the um, the alumni profiles in there. I think I missed a question earlier um, uh, by Paige about, do you need to bolster your graphic design skills? Um, you can. Uh, like I said, we've got people who are graphic designers in the program and designers of all sorts. Um, they tend to be skilled in that stuff already. We've got people who are not at all, like really not at all. Um, and they, they get to, you know, watch what other people do and learn from them. You can also take, again, once you're in the program, you can take the lynda.com courses for free. You can take the continuing edge courses for free, including graphic design. Um, so those are things that we offer along with the program, but you don't need to. Um, and you can, when you go through some of the thesis projects, it's evident which people have amazing you know, skills already and don't, but it's not a requirement. Um, Scott is asking, I currently work for my family business and wanted to make a complete transition to a different career. Just wanted to make sure this would open up more opportunities. That is, I would say, absolutely for sure. I know people, some of people in their very first semester are taking either systems thinking or fundamentals. One will be your first semester and then the other will be your second semester. Uh, are just blown away. It wasn't at all what they thought. It was like, and then it's like, wow, I'm seeing the world in a different way and I'm seeing what I might want to do in the world. So even at the very beginning, you know, the, the foundational courses, the core courses, it starts to open up to, up to other opportunities. And if you follow like our Twitter and our blog, you can kind of see some of the other, um, oh, Sarah's got to run. So we're already over the hour. So if any of you get to um, jump off, I, I totally understand. And we'll send a recording um, out after we're done. So maybe I should I should uh, respect time for everybody. It's so fun to talk about the program. I'm going to type my um, my email in here, and um, if anyone wants to uh, chat uh, about your personal situation, I'm more than happy to do that and connect you up with other students, faculty, and alumni if you want to learn more, you know, from their point of view. Okay, um, sorry we ran over. I really appreciate you guys joining us. Um, I love your questions. And if you want to know more about the program again, um, feel free to email me or um, if you can ask Mary about admissions. And thank you, Gautam, for sharing your time with all of us. And I hope to hear from, um, from you guys later. Thank you to all of you. Thank you. Okay, take care, everybody.